Hello, I'm Dr. Tom King, the Medical Director at Immunovia, and today I'd like to talk to you a bit about laboratory-developed tests. Uh, laboratory-developed tests are usually defined as an in vitro diagnostic or an IVD that is intended for clinical use and is designed, manufactured, and used within a single laboratory. LDTs are very important in the United States in terms of translating new technology into clinical diagnostics. And oftentimes this can be done much faster than the regulatory process through the FDA. Um, in the US, LDTs are typically performed in high complexity laboratories that are inspected and regulated under guidelines and standards established by the College of American Pathologists that has deemed status under CLIA to oversee clinical laboratories in the United States. I'm just showing an example uh, on the right of a recent review article talking about the regulation of laboratory developed tests. The FDA has not asserted authority to regulate LDTs, and it's really the uh, quality of the laboratory that defines those that can perform laboratory developed tests and really define their usefulness, their accuracy, and their precision. So much of the burden of developing these, all of the burden of developing these tests, and much of the burden of assuring their accuracy and specificity rests with the laboratory. An important example of laboratory uh, developed tests in the United States now is next generation sequencing. And the vast majority of next generation sequencing that's done in the US is performed in LDT, as LDTs in high complexity laboratories. The process for um, creating a clinical laboratory with College of American Pathologists inspection and approval is really to develop and approve laboratory procedures and methods first, to train and individuals and personnel and validate the tests and the information systems in the laboratory. At Immunovia in the United States, we've been working on this, and these aspects of our laboratory are complete and fully ready for inspection. The final step is a blind validation of laboratory-developed tests, which must involve a significant number of test samples and show adequate test performance to meet the predefined validation criteria. Once that's been achieved, one can apply, in our case, to the state of Massachusetts, for a state license, which will lead to concurrent CLIA registration. And CLIA is the federal government agency that oversees clinical laboratories in the United States. Once that's been achieved, um, the laboratory can perform patient testing and bill for that testing. So that's an important milestone in the development of an LDT. What is also very important is to carry that through to the next step, which is accreditation by the College of American Pathologists. Once that license is in place, one can apply to the college, and then they will come to visit and perform a really very thorough inspection, much more thorough than the state authorities would perform. And um, CAP really has been the gold standard, I think, for laboratories in the US and really throughout the world. Most contract research organizations and other laboratories of very high quality will um, will apply to the CAP and receive this accreditation. For our laboratory in Massachusetts, more than 500 individual CAP standards are required for the laboratory to be accredited. And I, I'm, I would say myself, I'm very familiar with these types of criteria. I've been an inspector with the CAP since 1993. So it's important to bring all of these things together because the laboratory itself is much more responsible for assuring the quality and the accuracy of testing than for tests that are FDA cleared. Um, thank you for your attention today, and I hope this has clarified the role of laboratory developed tests in the United States and the pathway towards their accreditation and performance in the United States. Thank you.